Okay, so that's uh, a lot of what you said today. Sounds like some of the things that President Trump advocated for on the campaign trail. You don't talk much about President Trump. Um, you know, he was, first of all, very much against uh, elitist control of U.S. foreign policy. He is very skeptical of NATO. He's skeptical in attitude about excessive U.S. international engagement, even though he engaged in humanitarian intervention twice in Syria. So I just wonder what, you, what the relationship is between your thesis and the Trump foreign policy, if you can you know, state what that is. It's kind of hard to tell. And more generally, how do you assess the Trump foreign policy from the perspective of, is it committed to liberal hegemony or is something else going on? Yeah, a lot of questions. I know, so answer here. them so, all, please, so, if you can. So, uh, well, answer any of the ones you want, and I'll I, follow up. I, yeah, if I answer one, you can, uh, yeah. don't answer two, you can come back at okay. me on two. First thing to say about President Trump is that when he was candidate Trump, he ran against liberal hegemony. Yeah. Remember I said there were three elements to liberal hegemony, spreading democracy all over the world. He made it clear we were getting out of the business of doing that. Number two, uh, uh, purveying a uh, open international economic order. He made it very clear that he likes tariffs and uh, he was interested in uh, uh, encountering this open international economic order, which he thought had hurt us. And with regard to institutions, uh, he does not like NATO, he does not like the EU, he does not like uh, the WTO, WTO NAFTA, I, yeah, long right, list. On and on. I think one of the first things he did when he became president was to throw the TPP in the garbage. Right. Uh, so he doesn't like institutions. Right. I often say, I think as candidates go, he was the most radical foreign policy candidate uh, in American history. I mean, he ran against the establishment. And by the way, have you ever asked yourself, why did he win? He won because large chunks of the American people understand that our foreign policy is bankrupt. Right? Uh, and by the way, Barack Obama ran against liberal hegemony as well although liberal hegemony defeated him once he was in office. Although by the, end of, by the end of his term, he basically had admitted, I think in the last two or three years, especially after Libya, he felt burned by it. Yeah, he felt burned by it. There's no question. And then the famous uh, interview with Jeffrey, Jeffrey Goldberg, Goldberg yeah, exactly. in, in The Atlantic, I right. think, captures that very and he, and, he, and he resisted those impulses right. for the last two years. Right. So what you have here now, given that almost everyone in Washington is committed to liberal hegemony, is you have Trump and maybe a handful of others who are up against the establishment. And the question is, who's going to win? Remember, this was the situation that obtained with Obama, and Obama lost. Uh, I think there's nobody with as much agency as Donald Trump. And uh, uh, I think if there's anybody who can beat back liberal hegemony, it's him. But the argument I would make, Jack, is I think liberal hegemony is done for it anyway. And it's not done for it because of Donald Trump. It's done for it because of the rise of China. Because you want to remember, my argument is you can only have liberal hegemony in a unipolar world. And we are, or I would argue we already have, moved out of a unipolar world with the rise of China and the resurrection of Russian power. We now live in a multipolar world. So we're going back to realpolitik. And what does, what does that mean for, um, so we're going back to real politique because we live in this multipolar world. What does that mean concretely for the role that human rights rhetoric plays in our foreign policy? Obama kind of dropped it, actually, to a surprising degree. Trump certainly isn't mentioning it. Do you think that means the human rights uh, element of our foreign policy that goes back, I guess, to Carter, do you think that kind of goes by the wayside? It certainly is not a driver of policy. Is that right? Yeah, my, my argument is that liberalism, which would include an yeah, emphasis on I'm, human rights. So I, I just meant that as an element of liberalism. Yes. Right. Uh, will always be there to describe our foreign policy, no matter how real politique it is. I often say that during the Cold War, the United States acted in a real politique way and disguised it with liberal rhetoric, right? So the rhetoric will always be there. The argument I'm making is that we actually behaved in a liberal fashion during the post-Cold War world, but those days are gone. I see. Now, one could argue that there are two real problems that liberal hegemony faces. Number one is the rise of China and the resurrection of Russian power. That's one. And number two is it's so clear now that the policy has failed. And given the fact that Donald Trump is in the White House and he's been pounding at liberal hegemony, that sort of one-two punch has, in a very important finished. way, finished it off. Uh, okay.
Thank you very much. That was a great discussion. Thank you. Appreciate it.